do you pass up the opportunity to spit blood in Joan Baez's face? Face, face, face. <laughs> Hey, what's happening? Mike Schmidt, 40 year old boy podcast. Folks, I got to warn you, but I'm going to tell you here at the jump. So I don't, if I don't acknowledge it later, you know, I told you earlier, I always reflect back on this moment, folks. If later on we're an hour into the show and, uh, and you think, why isn't Mike talking about that fucking thing? Well, reflect back now to the first 20 seconds when I told you that this thing was going to happen. Cause I'm, I'm nothing if not a podcasting Nostradamus. I'm podcastradamus. That's what I'm going to call myself. It's way too early for that to be the name of the show, but goddamn, do I want that to be the name of the show? Uh, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to write it down anyway, just because podcastradamus podcastradamus. I have no idea how to spell it, but I'm, I'm writing it down on a piece of paper. Uh, this show's off to a ripper on fucking start. I stop in the middle of it to take some fucking notes like my own goddamn secretary. I need to start wearing short skirts. If that's the case, I got to sexually harass myself. I got to slide a hand up my skirt and jerk myself off. That'll be fucking make things exciting for this goddamn show. Uh, podcaster Domus. Boy, I, I, how is there not a fucking podcast right now called Podcaster Domus of a guy doing bad fucking quatrains and predictions, right? That's got to be out there. If not, I've coined it. I've created it. Go ahead and run with it and do that thing. But also credit me. Fucking credit me, man. Don't fucking loan me down. Loan me down or blow me down. Please don't blow me down. Ah, gosh, uh, gah, gosh, gah. uh, did I say what the thing I'm going to be doing all show long? I don't think I did. I'm going to apologize for it now. And I may not acknowledge it later. Perhaps I will. Uh, as I said, as, uh, as po- in my guise as podcast Radamas, perhaps I'll mention it later. Uh, I'm going to yawn like a motherfucker in this show. I know I am. Did I say that already? I might not have. Look, I won't. There's no secrets between us. We're friends and pals. We're internet chums. Uh, This is like my fucking 30th attempt at starting this fucking show. I just, I'm just bored of my own fucking voice half the goddamn time. So then I sit down to talk. Uh, and it's not like that in the live streams. Like I love talking to people on the live stream and engaging on the live streams on Twitch. So come visit me on Twitch and do that kind of thing. But when I sit down to do this, uh, and again, you don't want to fucking hear me, but I'm, I'm just, I fucking crucify myself and I'm stopping now. Hey, hi. Um, but I might yawn a bunch during the show. Why? Well, why? I'm glad you asked. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm tired. I am fucking whipped beat. For one thing, uh, you know, I worked out hard as a motherfucker today. I went ham. That's what they call it, right? Isn't that what the kids say today? I went ham at the gym. And I'm, I'm trying to go a little harder. Not even a little harder. I'm trying to go a lot fucking harder now because I, weigh, I weighed in. Did I even get to my weigh-in? I don't think I did. You know, I weigh in on the first of every month, folks. And I, I had a goal. Here's my goal for the beginning of the year. I wanted to lose 10 pounds a month. Now, I've not made the effort of a man who wants to lose 10 pounds a month, but I'm trying to wish it and speak it into uh, existence. <laughs> but I have not lost 10 pounds a month. In fact, since the beginning of the year, I've lost 13 pounds, which, you know, that's fine. Or I had lost 13 pounds coming into May 1st, but I'll tell you what, I made major changes in April. I only ate six candy bars in April, which was fucking cool as hell. You know, goddamn, I, I will tell you another thing too about doing these live streams. I, I, do, I do the live streams and I went up talking, you know, four or five times a week and I'll talk for an hour on there. So I'm doing like fucking an hourly podcast even before I play the goddamn games or an hour long podcast before I play the games. And so I know I've told people this, that I've lost, uh, what, what, I know I've done the way in on this live stream, but I don't think I've done it here on the podcast. And so now, but now I think I'm repeating myself and Jesus, and then people are very nice. They're like, Mike, if you repeat yourself, that's totally fine. We're fine with it. I saw my buddy Kilt Bill over the weekend and he's like, Mike, oh, by all means, fucking repeat yourself. We totally want you to talk and say those things. But I mean, if I start fucking doddering like an old man and repeating the shit out of stuff, you're just going to be like, I got to get the fuck out of here, man. Cause I mean, that guy, if, if that was, that's something that guy told us in year seven. Now I got to admit, if you realize that it's something that I told you in year seven, you're a better person than I am. Cause I got no fucking idea what I talked about in year seven. Now I, when I think about year seven, I think year seven was actually a turnaround because that was when I, uh, you know, th- one thing ended and one thing began. Uh, and then, and that was me running the gamut from, hold on, fuck. There you go. First one of the goddamn show fighting it off. Uh, who, so who cares? Year seven exists. Go listen to it. But the point is uh, people are like, uh, go ahead and repeat stuff. And I'm like, I, I can't, I don't want to, I, I, I can't, I can't. <laughs> who am I yelling at? Um, 
So anyway, I did a weigh-in on May 1st, you know, because it's now, that's that's the whole deal. It's it's I weigh in the first of every month. I don't weigh myself the rest of the month at all. And I have a very fancy, expensive scale that just leans against the wall of my bathroom and prays for me to stand on it, but not until the first, buddy. At least not until I'm losing weight at a, a pretty good clip, and then I'll do it every week. But now, as it is, I, I stepped on it May 1st. So in April, man, I made big-time changes. I was lifting. I did, a, I did a little more cardio. Not a lot. I won't lie. But I only ate six candy bars for the entire fucking month, man. Six candy bars. Now, I was usually eating one a day, sometimes two a day. So I would say, generally, I was eating 40 candy bars a month. That's, that's my guess. Jesus, just saying that fucking number is staggering. But you figure there's a 30-day month, so I was eating one candy bar a day, but then some days I ate two. Holy fuck. Dude, what is wrong with me? Just tackle me. Do me a favor. You know what? Just like I did to Slimer in the beginning of this podcast, cross the streams and throw me in a fucking trap at some point. I'm going to call them. Call the Ghostbusters at 555-2368. Are they Schmidtbusters? Call the Schmidtbusters. Get them on board. Make the Ghostbusters and the Schmidt brother, Busters brothers, Schmidt brothers, call the Schmidt brothers. Go ahead and talk to them because I haven't talked to them in years. <laughs> Several of them. Uh, all right. So here's the thing, man. I'm fucking beat and uh, and I'm tired because I went to the gym today to work out fucking hard because, again, I weighed in May 1st. And uh, like I said, with all the changes I made in April, I was like, all right, here we go. I made some changes. I'm going to wait. I thought I thought because jeans were fitting better. My face looks different because I always when I'm when I'm losing weight, my face starts to change. That's when my cheekbones start to show up. And everybody's like, oh, look at you. You're like a human being. You don't have a fucking jello mold on your fucking head. I look like a person, which makes me happy. So uh, so I was all excited for that. I'm like, I mean, I can see I can see changes in the mirror. I know what's happening. I put on jeans. The jeans fit differently. I, I know. And look. I know I sound like some fucking 70s sitcom mom or some bullshit. Oh, jeans are, uh, they fit less tight. Yay. Uh, woohoo. Fuck you. Shut up. Now I, but, but this is, fuck it. The show's about my life. So this is what happens. Beginning in May, we do the win. And also we've got the little Schmitty's Attaboy Fit Brigade page, which, uh, you know, I posted in March. I skipped all of April. <laughs> I should have jumped back in. Some people are still posting in there. Nah, a lot of people are not, you know, it, it petered out. I will not lie. It still exists. And if I go ahead and get active, perhaps other people will be active. But even if they're not, I should be beholden to you guys. I should be fucking going in there reporting to you all these things. But I do it on the live stream, and then I do it here, and then I'm like, well, nobody wants to hear me again on Facebook because I'm a fucking weirdo and I talk myself out of shit all the goddamn time, and also I'm fucking lazy. All right, hi. So uh, the point is I fucking weighed in on May 1st. Very excited to do so too, by the way. And uh, tipped the scales at 347, which uh, is uh, I lost a pound. I lost one pound in fucking April. And, and part of me thinks it's because I was cooking. Like I started cooking food and making food, and I started to eat every day sort of. And look, I ate every day anyway, but I ate candy. Uh, or I'd eat a fucking half a sub sandwich, whatever the fuck. But I actually started to eat meals in April. I started to cook. I, yeah, I made bacon and eggs, and uh, and I made you know pork in the instant pot. You know, yeah, you, you heard, folks. You know, it needs me to recount all the bullshit that I cooked in April. Sometimes I cooked in April. Well, then it, I, I I did too much because then in May, I only I only lost one pound in fucking April, and I'm. And look, I won't lie. It spun me the fuck out. It sent me into a little uh, funk, I guess you would say. So I was like, all right. So then uh, last, week, last week, first week of May, uh, you know, I did this podcast on Wednesday. And then uh, and Wednesday was the uh, that was actually the uh, the first, wasn't it? So I didn't maybe that's why I didn't talk about it then. Anyway, I went and did, I went to poker the next night. And then I do when I went to poker, I fucking I ate some bullshit cookies. I ate some pizza. Uh, I actually got the shakes at his house because I was like, oh, I need chocolate or something. It was like, it was like fucking weird, man. All of a sudden my body rebelled against me. So then I ate, uh, you know what else I ate too at the fucking poker game? Sour gummy bear, gummy bears. Now I'm not a sour guy, but I am a fucking food guy. And I was like, oh, what are those gummy bears? Let me try them. So I fucking, I ate like eight of those. Right. And I'm like, oh, cause they weren't sour too. That was another thing. That was, that was the whole deal. They went around the table where it was like, these aren't fucking sour. Try these. These aren't sour. Fucking try these. Um, so I tried them. And they weren't sour. So I was like, all right, well, I can pound some of these down. So I ate eight. And Pat even looked at me and he goes, you know what, dude? Those things are fucking gross. He goes, the thing is you'll eat one too many and it'll wipe you the fuck out. I'm like, ah, yeah, but I, but I know me. I'm like fucking Captain Iron Stomach and I'm ready to fucking take out whatever the fuck you put in front of me. I don't care. I can eat it and I'm fine. But, uh, you know, I'm eating fucking two chocolate bars a goddamn day. 
So, but again, I stopped kind of eating like that. So I said, I, I ate eight gummy bears and I was fine. And then I threw in two more. And I know you're thinking to yourself, why are you eating 10 gummy bears? Well, because you got to eat two of the same color. I can't eat just one yellow and then one orange and possibly two. No, no. You got to eat two yellow, two orange, two red, two green. You got to do that. You got to match them up because they're pals. They're in the container together. So I can't eat one green and leave one green solo. They got to go to their deaths together, baby. They got to get masticated together. They got to wind up in one big fucking pile of sugar slash sour slash pectin slash whatever the fuck gummy bears are made out of. I guess it's sugar. I I don't even know. I don't want to speculate. (laughs) I don't know. I don't even know what that means. I look, I'm not going to speculate on your ingredients in your gummy bears, friends. Um, It's just like, you know, it's just jello with a heart on. That's all the fucking gummy bear is. But I ate eight of them. And then I powered two more into my mouth and I chewed them and I swallowed them. And I'm not, it was instantaneous. Pat was a fucking genius. Pat was candy Stradamus. Because he, he or, 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 or gummy Stradamus, I guess you could call him, because he, he told me, he goes, he, he, all of a sudden you'll hit some precipice where you're like, fuck, this sucks. And I did, I ate eight and I was fine, but then I ate two more. And within 15 minutes, I'm just like, oh, 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 I, it was, it was so fucking gross. I just felt, because also I had eaten like two pieces of pepperoni pizza and a cookie. I mean, it was just all, you know, that thing where uh, my stomach doesn't do good with flavors, like with a bunch of different shit. If you're eating a meal, that's one thing. Uh, as I've said before, you can't eat like, like with ice cream, I can't eat a bunch of like a, you know, ice cream for some reason fucks me up. I also can't eat like multiple things. Like I can't like, if I have a candy bar, that's one thing. But if I eat like three different candy bars, like if I eat Reese's cups and then a fucking Hershey bar and then like a Twix, I'd get sick. For some reason, it's just this ridiculous Perseus fucking clash of the Titans of candy in my goddamn stomach. And I got to deal with it where I, I, so I, I've known now that I have to, I, too many flavors fucks me up. So, uh, so it's like when I go to eat, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, when I, I mean, I can eat sushi and that's different flavors. I don't look, I don't know. I, I don't know how my body works anymore. It's, it's a fucking, it's ready for the scrap heap. Like I just read, you know, it's funny. I read today that there was a guy that he used to be the general manager of the Green Bay Packers. Ted Thompson in his name. And and uh he he got an an autonomic disorder, auto autonomic. I don't know how you fucking describe it. And and <laughs> I, I'm not laughing at him, but reading it, it just means you lose control of your body. You you lose control of your brain, you lose control of your hands, like you can't make little hand movements. Also, you lose control of all your bowels and your bladder, you can't control those at all. Like you've and I, I'm reading this and they're trying to explain it in a good way, and he's like I'm going to beat this and then I'm going to come back and work again. And I'm like, I look, dude, if you're shitting yourself on the regular, why would you ever want to work again? I mean, yeah, if you do everything you can to dedicate yourself to not shitting yourself, don't worry about getting back behind a fucking desk. Well, I look back to getting to being a consultant and then in the NFL, well, I got news for you the, the NFL people do not want their offices to smell like fucking autonomic shit. So you better stay home and fucking put a plug in your ass or do something and do some special exercises or take some goddamn medicine. And also this dude is like, I think he's like 66 years old. And look, I'm 52, or I'll be 52 in July. Uh, oh, look at me. I'll, I'll, I'll be Kate Pearson in July. Ha <laughs> ha, be 52. I'll roam if you want to, yeah. Roam around the world. All right, unless you're, <laughs> roam if you want to, unless you're Tim Thompson or Terry Thompson or Tom Thompson or whatever the fuck his name is because you shit yourself in Ireland. Uh <laughs> But yeah, man, I'll be 52 in July. So 66 doesn't seem that old to me anymore. I mean, it's, it's rapidly approaching because once you hit where I'm at, dude, your life is just a fucking out of control snowball rolling downhill. I'm the boulder chasing Indiana Jones. That's who the fuck I am, man. I I can't, nothing is slow. I mean, for you, you young 30 year old whippersnappers, you think you got your whole future ahead of you and you fucking do and make the most of it. Cause I'll tell you what, at 52, um, I, and by the way, I, I don't I don't have an autonomic disorder. I've, I've controlled over my fucking shit. I got all that stuff going on. But at the same time, I know I am I'm seconds away I'm from some catastrophic hip industry injury industry, the hip industry. You remember the hip industry um, and having it all come down around me. So I. I I don't understand these like this dude. Again, it's that I, I talked about this before when fucking George Burns died. George Burns weight. He was like 104 or whatever the fuck. And they had to keep saying, oh, he's joking around with the nurses. He's having a good time. And, you know, and hopefully he'll get, he'll be out of the hospital soon. Dude, it's okay. You're 104. Just, just lay down and let the creeping shadow of death climb into your nostrils and your throat and your ears and take you away. You've given you, you've, you've been over a century, buddy. You're in triple figures. 
You don't need to. You're, who who is he? Who are you impressing by saying he's joking with the nurses? Because I got news for you: the nurses are just like, oh, this is funny. I just saw George Burns' cock as I changed his diaper, and he told me a knock knock joke. I mean, get the fuck out! And also, I don't even believe he was doing it. Like I said, that just shames old people who are a hundred who don't want to do a fucking thing. I talked about. I used to. Wrote, I wrote a bit a million years ago about Michael Landon. Michael Landon goes on the fucking Tonight Show, and he's like, hey man, I'm getting fucking coffee enemas to treat my cancer. I'm going with this whole holistic approach. And I'm like, I, I don't uh, I don't know why Michael Landon gets a pass. Why do you get to go on the fucking Tonight Show and tell us all that you're getting fucking coffee enemas? That's going to just gross people out if it's somebody else. Think about it this way. All right, Michael Landon, wholesome little house in the prairie dude. He's like, hey, man, I'm taking coffee enemas. And everybody's like, how brave. But if fucking Madonna goes on the Tonight Show and she goes, ah, I'm taking coffee enemas. They're like, you harlot, close your asshole. How dare you? How dare, how dare you fill your colon with dark roast? What the fuck is wrong with you, you witch? Uh, but Landon gets away with it. You know, it all depends on who the fuck you are. And they give you a fucking pass. So now this dude from the Green Bay Packers is like, I have an autonomic disorder, which none of us would know what the fuck that was. All right. Autonomic disorder. I'm like, all right, well, I mean, dude, by the time you're over 60, you're getting all sorts of fucking disorders. You're getting syndromes. You're getting all that kind of shit. Whatever the fuck is happening, you're going to get it. I mean, at 20, you don't get a fucking syndrome, or at least you shouldn't. But if you're over 60 and you get a syndrome, don't act surprised. Because I get news for you right now, lying in wait, lying in the weeds past the age of 60, syndromes all over the place, disorders, all of those are just waiting to claim you and take you down like a fucking cheetah in the jungle. It's just going to, so all of a sudden some syndrome is going to creep out and bite your Achilles and you're going to fall down and they're going to shit yourself because the disorder also swooped in and fucking took control of you. And it's okay. It's all right, man. You're 65 or 67 or whatever. Go ahead and dedicate yourself to winning this battle for your health. Because I've talked about this before. You know, my mom and I talk, and she's 75, going to be 76 in June. And uh, she has a remarkably healthy attitude about it where she just says, yeah, man, I, you know, you don't get old. You, you just you get old and fucking shit just stops working. That's just how it goes. And I've never really put much thought into it. You just figure you get old and you die or whatever the fuck. But if you really fucking think about it, and again, I'm not telling you anything you don't fucking know. Dude, the fucking human body is is just an astonishing invention. I mean, it is because how many, you, what do you drive a car? You drive a car for 10 years and then you need a new fucking car? Your body, dude, I'm 52. The shit I've put it through punching my hands through walls and getting into fights and getting jumped and fucking slapped around and having swine flu and getting my appendix out and then having a surgery where they cut my stomach into ribbons. I mean, it's just, and I'm still here and I feel great. Like I'm not fucked up at all. My back is completely be much better now. I'm lifting hard. Uh, you know, I'm way too fucking fat, but I mean, I'm trying to fucking fix that as best I can. But, but Jesus Christ, what you put your body through, because my mom, dude, my mom's had cancer three times. She's had two lungs and a fucking brain. And, uh, and oh, and I talked to her, dude, this is fucking brutal. She, she's, um, my mom is sharp. You know, she's not losing any brain cells. When we talk, she's still all there and she's not repeating anything. So uh, she's got that on me. <laughs> there you go. My mom's a lot fucking healthier than I am for fuck's sake. But, uh, but we talk and, and she's like, yeah, you know, I've got a hip now and she's got a knee now. She's, had a, she's already had like a knee replacement and she probably needs the other one done. She's got a hip thing. And her. so I talked to her the other day and she's like, oh, man, my chest is killing me. I'm like, what the fuck happened? And I, well, I didn't say what the fuck happened to my mom. I was like, oh, no, what happened? And uh, my mom tells me this story. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to start this story. I'll bet you could fucking finish it. I'll bet you, you could finish this goddamn story knowing that my mom is going to be 76 in June. My mom went to the store. And uh, she took my stepdad's truck. My stepdad's got, you know, like an F-150 Viper. I don't know. One, just a gigantic fucking vehicle. So my mom drives it and, and Dan drives it. And it's just, it's, you know, literally it's filled with my, my mom, my stepdad and guns and probably empty beer cans because I mean, I, that would crack me up when I would ride in Dan's truck and there would just be fucking, you know, Lucy's rolling around and fucking actual full beers and a bunch of empties. Uh, um, but my mom took the, took the truck to the store. And, and when she's telling me the story, I'm hearing it unfold. And I'm like, holy fuck. She's, uh, you know, my mom has, she has a handicap placard. Because again, she's had cancer three times, broke her back before. She's almost died twice from pneumonia. Uh, so she's earned that little fucking guy in a wheelchair on a blue card. So she parks and she reaches down to try to find the, the placard for the, the, you know, it's between the seats or whatever. So she fucking leans down to grab it. And again, finish it. You, you know the rest of the story. Uh, she's old. 
So, and she didn't tell me that. She's just like, I don't know what happened, Michael. She leaned over to get the fucking sign and, and she didn't put the car in park. So she kind of like leaned over. She kind of reached looking for the sign. Then she realizes she's moving. Okay. And she's parked at a store. So she, uh, in the moment panics. And she tells me that she hits the fucking gas to the floor. Like she went to hit the brake as hard as she could. She floored it. She floored the truck. Jumps the fucking, the, the curb thing, you know, cause there's that, you know, what are the, I don't know, those fucking cement stoppers in the parking lot. She jumps that jumps the sidewalk and smashes into the fucking brick wall of the store. And, uh, and I'm like, Oh my God, mom, Jesus, are you okay? And she goes, Oh, I mean, um, she's like, my, my chest hurts so bad. And you know, they won't give me anything for pain. And also with the chest, I don't know, because of my lungs and I can't, I can't very well do anything in there. And, um, and then she's mad at her doctor. Hey, fucking doctor. You won't give me anything for fucking pain. And you know, I'm sitting here wailing. I can't, I got to sleep sitting up in a recliner and, and she, you know, details it and runs it down. And then she finally says, but I'll tell you what, Michael, I don't know what the hell happened. You know, I've, I've done this a million times. I don't, I don't know what the hell happened. I mean, she goes, it's my fault. She goes, and I'll tell you what she goes, I, I felt so miserable. I felt so bad because she goes, if somebody was in front of me, they were dead. They were absolutely, if anybody was on the sidewalk in front of me, they were absolutely dead. She goes, because I floored it and I jumped the curb and smashed into this brick wall. So now Dan's got to get his truck fixed. And I've got, you know, I went to the hospital and there's an ambulance and paramedics. And I'm like, oh my God, mom, I, how do you, and again, uh, this might tell you a little bit about me. If you hear this story, I, I said, mom, how the fuck do you not call me and tell me this? Ah, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, it's no big deal. Nobody cares about it. It just fucking happened, you know, and it's, you just deal with it. It's just life. And I'm like, yeah, but you can tell me, you know, so I, I know you're okay. Why? So you can worry about it. Fuck that. You know, I'll just wait until you call me. Uh, okay. You know, cause I call her once a week. And I guess I, now I've got to look forward to the update. <laughs> you know, hey, oh, Michael, I chopped off a finger while I was slicing a fish. <laughs> like, what? When were you going to tell me that? Oh, it's fine. You would have shaken my hand in a month when you came and visited. Mom, I'm not visiting you in a month. Maybe you should. Oh, God damn it. It's about your finger, Mom. But she jumped the fucking curb and smashed into a goddamn uh, a truck, uh, the, the truck into a wall. And, and like I said, told me flat out, I would have laid anybody out. Anybody who's in front of me would have been a fucking grease spot on the wall. Um... But yeah, she, she, and and also it's funny because you know, the cops came, she got a ticket. She's like, it was my fault. I absolutely got a ticket. And I, in my brain, I, I, I guess I'm thankful because obviously there were no empties in the car because they would have fucking ran her in for that or made her blow a breathalyzer or something. So maybe Dan's better about keeping empty fucking beer cans in his goddamn truck. I have no idea. Um, but yeah, my mom, she just fucking flipped the fucking switch, hit the wrong fucking pedal and, and jumped the curb and smashed into the wall. Jesus. I, I, and that's, that's what happens, man. You get old, you fucking jump curbs because you're not paying attention. You don't think about what's happening or you fucking get an autonomic disorder and you wind up shitting all over yourself, but then you assure everybody, "Ah, I'm okay. I'll be back at work in no time. Why don't you just, why don't you just fucking fix yourself and go talk to your kids? You don't need to work anymore. You've had a fucking life. I don't, and again, I, I come from a different place where, I mean, even now at 52 or even when I was younger, I was like, I don't want to fucking work. I mean, I, cause I don't, I mean, I, I'll, I'll, I will not fucking lie to you. I'll tell you flat out. I don't, I don't want to do anything. I, I don't, uh, I like doing this. I like doing the video game streamings. Uh, I want to do live stuff to go talk to people because that, that's, because that's the thing I'm good at and something I enjoy. But as far as doing a fucking job, man, I don't, I don't, uh, you know, I was in the mix on a fucking writing gig, I told you, and I, I didn't get it. I wanted it because for the discipline and also for the money and also because I would like to get back in the loop on doing something like that. But then there's also that small part of me that's like, you don't want to do this shit, dude. You don't want to do a fucking gig. But yeah, I do. I, I, I absolutely do. But you you struggle within yourself because, I mean, look, what I want to do is win the fucking Powerball. You know what I mean? And then you're like, ha ha, I can do whatever the fuck I want. But in reality, you you know, that's never going to fucking happen. So you do what you got to do to try to stay afloat and do the best you can to do your job and make it work. Um, I know I keep telling you, I got to get back on the road. I get back. I, well, I really do have to get back on the road. I'm trying, I've been avoiding it, hoping something else would come along. I will tell you this. Uh, <laughs> I shouldn't tell you this, but I'll tell you this anyway. I have an audition next week. I, well, uh, all right, let's put it this way. I thought it was an audition and then they fucking contacted me via email. And I was like, uh, uh. um, a- again, this is a gig that I should just fucking get. I I should just be able to walk in there, meet these people, talk to them for fucking 15 minutes to a half an hour, show them I can do what they want, and then get the gig. 
I'm, and I'm sure there's plenty of other people out there who would think the same thing, and that's fine. And now you're thinking to yourself, well, Mike, what's the gig? Well, I get these things from an acting website. And and most of the time, they're looking for reality people. You know, like it's like BuzzFeed video. BuzzFeed people are like, hey, we're looking for vegans who want to be handcuffed to a meat eater for a weekend. Well, fuck, nobody wants to fucking do that for your bullshit stupid article. You know, for $70, you want to fucking do that. But that's, unfortunately... That's that's what it is now. Everything is non-union. There's no fucking money out there, and they all want reality people. We're looking for real veterans with one arm. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Great. Now I'm literally in the mix against IEDs. That's that's basically who I'm going up against in auditions. We're looking for somebody with no teeth. Oh, are you? Well, good for you. But the problem is they'll find it. That, that's it's just it's just such a weird time, man. I mean, you know, the Writers Guild is also fucking with with producers because they're you know they're going on basically it's essentially a strike they all fired their agents because agents are doing that packaging deal thing and you don't care about any of that stuff but i see it and i'm like man like i don't the, the whole landscape of entertainment is changing and i've talked about it on here before you know essentially i i have my own broadcasting network this podcast and and the youtube channel and twitch i mean i, I have my own shows i mean i have a you know, like i said a 40 year old boy twitch show 40 year old boy archives on on the fucking youtube channel and if i wanted to and fuck that. If I wasn't so lazy, I would do YouTube videos every week too and put those up and talk about movies and TV and fucking review stuff and pop culture. Uh, but also, I'm fucking way out of the loop on goddamn pop culture, man. I, I like I, People want to talk about Game of Thrones. I got no fucking clue. I got no idea. I think there's a dragon. Isn't there a, someone's named Cersei and someone's named Daenerys and then there's a dragon and then there's a guy fucking Raisin Bran or whatever the fuck. And, uh, and I guess there's a Night King. Like, And the reason I know these things is because fucking Twitter. It, with spoiler culture, I, I shouldn't know any of this stuff because people should go ahead and hold their tongue. But at the same fucking time, man, that's all anybody wants to talk about on Sunday night. And I must have been this insufferable when Breaking Bad and The Sopranos was on, possibly. I just didn't have the social media outlet. But holy fuck, does everybody, every meme, every discussion, everything is about fucking Game of Thrones. And I've never seen the fucking thing. And I mean, and and it's my fault because, I mean, I, I've had a, you know, a generous listener who shared with me their HBO password and told me I should get involved. And I'm like, all right, well, this would be a cool thing. Uh, and by the way, I thank Thank you to that listener. They know who they are. But also, how have none of you given me a Netflix password yet, by the way, now that I think about that? Jesus Christ. I, look, even if you're not donating to the fucking show, you can give me a Netflix password and save me 10 bucks a month, you fucking dicks. <laughs> Although, I got to be honest, man, I don't know if I can use your fucking Netflix password. Because uh, I had a Netflix password with uh, with Jill, and we were using her son's account. And that and that was fine. But at the same time, I, you know what? Actually, bullshit. I take it back. One, one listener did give me her 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 netflix password a million years ago like it's got to be six years ago now and i i never used it because i don't i don't want anybody to fucking see what i watched that's the thing is they get to see what you watch and that's all i need is for you motherfuckers to know that i you know i watched famous hand jobs from brazil and you'd be like oh what the fuck man and that's gonna fuck up your algorithm too if you fucking get the the the, the you know you the you give me the password and then I watch fucking, you know, throat coats swallowing through the centuries. You're going to be like, oh, dude, I didn't want to watch a story about people swallowing cum. And it's like, well, I did. And I'm sorry it fucked up your algorithm because now going forward, all you're going to get is fucking things. Hey, you liked throat coats swallowing through the centuries. What are you going to get now? <laughs> take, take a look at this. <laughs> Two-fisted cock attack. All right. That's great. Um so I don't, I don't want, I don't need you to see my fucking peccadillos or the bullshit that I, that's like if we shared a Pornhub account. Oh, dude, if you got a Pornhub password, do not send it my way. Cause the last thing I want you to see is the fucking, what, what porn I'm watching for fuck's sake and who they look like. <laughs> um, nobody has a Pornhub password right now that I think about it. Nobody, I just, you can't, nobody can have fucking, there's no fucking way you've got a Pornhub password. There's so much free fucking Porn, I, I, cause, all right, look, I'll tell you this. Uh, <laughs> you know, when I, I, I'll go on and find porn online when I'm trying to take care of some business. And uh, I found a streaming channel that had like uh, a, a streaming site that has just like full length pornos. You know what I mean? Like a, a bunch of them. So I tried, you know, I saw the title of one. I was like, all right, I'll jump into this one and see what it looks like. And it's just uh motherfucker. It's just, it's. I, I've now conditioned my brain to just, I just need 90 seconds at a clip. You know what I mean? Now watch, I might, I might watch 10 to 20, 90 second clips, you know what I mean? Or, or 30 second clips or whatever the fuck, uh, you know, cause that's, well, hey, look, you don't need to know my fucking jerk off habits. But anyway, the point is I'm, I, 
I tried to watch like a full porno and it's uh no thank you. I, I just I can't anymore. I mean I, I I just who's got the fucking time, man? Really? I I mean I you know because if I hey look if I wanted to I could I could just fucking you know fucking grab myself and throw some ropes and be done with it in fucking three minutes. I mean if I wanted to. Um, or I, like I said, I can sit at the computer and I can go, you know, 30 to 45 minutes just watching short clips, but nobody wants to watch a full movie. I'm watching them talk. <laughs> I don't want to see them talking, even if they're trying to be all sexy with one another. You know what I watched? I actually tuned into this. They did a fucking justice league porno. Okay. And I don't know if it was a joke. Like if someone uploaded it as a goof. I didn't see Superman's cock once. Like I, I saw no fucking in the Justice League porno. The only thing I saw once was like Batwoman and and Wonder Woman were having an argument in what looked like the Batcave, and uh, it, but you could see they were getting like heated and kind of sexy, and all of a sudden they just start fucking making out, and then Wonder Woman licks Batwoman from the chin all the way up over the top of the cowl, and I'm like that's not sanitary. I mean, look, I mean you're gonna put your face in all sorts of interesting places, but if you're licking the top of the cowl. That's uh, that cowl is filthy. Can we agree on that? Batman's costume's got to reek. Arthur's got to be the best launder, launderer, laundry guy in the fucking world because those bad outfits got. I mean, you're sweating like a motherfucker. You're doing all that cardio. You're beating the shit out of guys. You smell worse than the guys in my video games who are fighting zombies, getting blood all over themselves. Fucking Batman comes home after a long night in the alleys and the shadows and shit. He's got to reek like a motherfucker. Holy shit. God damn you. Literally, Batman goes out and he fucks up 10 dudes and he goes home and Alfred's just like, uh, sir, you smell like you fucked up 10 dudes. It's like, yeah, I did, motherfucker. Wash my suit. I'm going to go sleep. Bring me some toast in 14 hours. Um, I guess Batman's not that mean to Alfred, right? He just, he's a normal guy. He's an, uh, and do you think like, I, you know, we, when you watch the Avengers, you, you see Tony Stark, he's in the Iron Man suit. Uh, again, that thing's just got a fucking reek. I don't give a fuck if it's nanotechnology or not. Once you're inside there, you're sweating like a motherfucker. It's just got, and you're pouring sweat. There's got to be fucking tons of sweat, like puddles inside there. I mean, it's like when I used to try to cut weight when I was a kid, you would see wrestlers would wear garbage bags. I'm like, all right, maybe I'll do something like that. So I'd wear a garbage bag when I went to play football. You know, I'd wear like fucking two pairs of like sweats and shorts and a fucking garbage bag and then long sleeves over that, whatever the fuck. And then afterwards, the garbage bag is just fucking, it's awful. It's just, it's just filled with like three pounds of liquid you. Literally, it's just a fucking puddle of used to be me. And nobody wants to fucking deal with that. As you're stripping your clothes off and dripping all over the fucking place, that's gross. So imagine, now that's just me playing football, Sandlot fucking football or whatever the fuck. If you're Iron Man and you're fighting Thanos and any number of space creatures, and also, you you, you know he shit the suit. There's not, even, even involuntarily. I'm not saying that Iron Man has an autonomic disorder, okay? What I am saying, however, is that... Uh, you can't get punched in the face by a fucking 600 pound space creature without maybe at least a fucking one nugget coming out of you, flying out of your ass. It's got to You at some point you had to shit yourself. All those superheroes dead. Captain America, every single Thor, not Thor's a God. He's absolutely not shitting himself. All right. But, uh, Spider-Man's so skinny. Like there's no doubt that somebody fucking kicks him in the gut. And, and, you know, and cause look, you never know when you're going to fight. How many, let me ask you this. How many times have you like run out to the store or whatever? Or you've gone to a function and, uh, and you ate like, you know, two bowls of chili that day and you didn't even think about it. And you went out to this fucking function. All of a sudden you get the fucking bubble gut at the Met Gala and you're like, oh man, I'm gonna have to shit at the Met Gala. That's fucking brutal. Okay, great. Now say you're Tony Stark and you have a couple of bowls of chili and you say, Hey Pepper, how are you doing? And she's like, fantastic. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to sleep this off, man. I just ate fucking piles of chili. I, feel, I can't even move. And then all of a sudden, doot, doot, the fucking Iron Man alarm goes off. You know, and you're like, fuck, I gotta get out here. And you push the button and the suit covers you up. And then you go off to fly and there's the Mandarin. He wants a piece of you and fucking uh, backstroke or whatever the fuck. All these other villains are there and they're lining up and you're going to fight, but you got a belly full of fucking honey chipotle chili and if someone boots you in the fucking stomach you're gonna shit all over your iron man pants that's gonna fucking happen immediately and i'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing i'm just saying it's a goddamn necessity i'm saying it happens because again like i said you never know when danger is lurking you never know when shit like that's gonna happen fucking captain america he's uh you know with his girlfriend or whatever the fuck or he's talking to bucky and the falcon and all of a sudden just out of nowhere fucking the rhino charges in and you're like, fuck, I got to fuck up the rhino. And then you start to fight him. Then he hits your shield and you fall down the wrong way and you land on your hip incorrectly. And then it just squeezes some out of you. You're like, oh, man. And your Captain America suit has been befouled. That's like shitting on the flag, man. That's not good. I, You know what? I'm going to say this right now. Captain America, never eat. You should never eat again because I know you're pissing yourself in that suit. That's just you pissing on the goddamn American flag, Captain America. Hey, Steve Rogers, you're better than that. 
No more eating or drinking before a fight. But that's the problem. They don't know when the fight's going to happen. All of a sudden, you're enjoying a nice lunch, and maybe it's some sort of uh, mugu gai pan. Maybe you're having some sort of Chinese food, and you're going, oh, man, I'm totally full. And then Bat Rock the Leaper shows up, and he wants a piece of you, and he calls you out. You're like, oh, fuck, all right. Well, I got to throw down with this guy. Now, you're trying to throw a bunch of shield attacks to keep him at arm's length, but eventually Bat Rock the Leaper will make it through your defenses, and he's going to land one pl- well-placed boot to the solar plexus, and then, boom, you're going to evacuate fucking star-spangled banner shit all into your goddamn pantaloons. It's going to be terrible. Uh, you can't shit on the flag, Steve Rogers, but all those fucking guys, Spider-Man, Spider-Man's in school. I mean, and look, I, I was in school. I never wanted to shit in my high school. I never did just because, and look, I was a cool, I, you know, I don't want to say I was a cool guy, but I knew cool guys. Like I got to hang out in the kind of the cool group of my, in my class or whatever. And look, there might be other people in the class of 84 who are like, no, we were the cool group. And I got news for you. I'm not here for that argument. I'm not here for any arguments about fucking high school or bullshit. Just yesterday, one of my friends posted on uh, Facebook. He's like, Hey man, what was the coolest thing about Bolingbrook? Like, what do you think is the best thing about Bolingbrook? And I almost just typed, I left. Like literally I was going to, because I mean, look, I, I grew up there and that's fine. And I'm glad people are still there and raising their kids. Cause then there, there's one dude wrote and I, and uh, he just wrote, I love the fact that, uh, you know, I, I, I got this job and I've worked it for 20 years and I've been able to raise, I was raised here and my, I've raised my family here and I know all the people I still knew in high school and I, and a lot of them still work with me over here at this job. And that's the, that's the, I think that's the fucking coolest thing in the world, man. And, uh, and oh my God, I, I can't think of a sadder thing. I, I just can't to think that you stayed there. I mean, and look, maybe maybe you've broadened your horizons. Maybe you've gotten on a plane and gone somewhere else and seen how other people live. Maybe you've gone to uh, anywhere foreign and good for you. You've opened your eyes and realized that the, that life is totally different and you've got to go ahead and experience different things and walk in other people's shoes. But holy fuck, man, if your whole deal is, hey, man, I never left this fucking cocoon that I've been in for 45 years, 50 years, 55 years, and I'm excited. And I hope my kids will stay here forever and everyone's going to stay here forever. It's the fucking best. And, uh... And I, and I don't, you know, and I, let people like things that they, that, that they like. All right. I, if you, if that's the life you want to live, that's great. But it, for me, for me, oh my God, I, I don't, I can't imagine what I would be if I, if I still stayed there, if I lived there. Uh, not that I'm, not that I'm anything now. You know what I mean? It's not like I escaped and I'm like, I'm the best in the world. Look at me, not shitting my Superman costume, but, uh, but you got to feel you're a better person if you go out and experience the world, right? But also, the world sucks. I think we all know that. If you look around now, you're just like, holy fuck. Because I, I don't, I genuinely, because I, I don't, I try not to get involved in any of this shit. I don't give a fuck. I mean, I, honestly, it sounds terrible, but like, everything's going to fall apart and I'll be dead before everything goes completely to shit, I think, I hope. But I don't, uh, I don't see how, I don't, I don't, perhaps I'm too tuned in, but I, it, it's too far gone. And I've talked about this and I've echoed this and I don't want to talk, and it's, you know, this obviously, this is kind of a dominating thing in my life and certainly in my brain. I, and so that's why it comes up often on this show. Um, but I don't, uh, I don't have any hope at all. None. I, I hope all of your children grow up to make this a better world. I hope every one of them uh, makes the best efforts that they possibly can. I mean, just yesterday, dude, they fucking, they, they, uh, is that yesterday? No, it was earlier today. Jesus Christ, now that I think about it, it was earlier today. They uh, they raided some house here in L.A., and the guy had like a th- like 2,000 guns. 2,000 2, guns. How, who, who has five guns? All right? Because think about it. I think five guns is... I Look, I think one gun's a lot of gun. But if you got five guns, and you look at them on the bed, so you lay them out on the bed, you're like, ah, oh, look at my collection of weapons. You know, if only I had 1,995 more of these, I'd be all content. I'd be happy. I'd be <laughs> like, dude, no fucking way. Are you shitting me? How many fucking guns do you need to feel safe? And I guess, look, maybe he was an arms dealer. Maybe he was that guy. I don't fucking know. Maybe he's selling them out of trunks. But I know he's a white supremacist, and that's that's no good. So, I, I mean, once that shit starts hitting the fan, and there's armed patrols shooting migrants, and I mean, I, it's just, it's... It's all just going to fucking go tits up, man. It just is. And I and I I don't see anything stopping it. You know, fucking Trump keeps doing these these rallies and he keeps going, hey, I might stay as president for 14 years. Oh, I'm just kidding. Ha ha ha. Anyway, huge. 
And it's like, everybody's like, ha ha, that's an awesome joke. And then there are people who are like, he's really going to do that, you know? I mean, you do, you are aware of that. Like, even if he loses in two years, he's going to go, uh, you know, I didn't lose. Uh, we're going to have an investigation because from November, uh, when if he loses the, the election to January when the new person's supposed to be sworn in, that's... That's three full months of Trumpian mischief. That's that's three full months of fucking 80 tweets a day telling his listeners and handlers or whoever the fuck to get their guns and make sure that the world isn't, you know, there's not a coup installed to take him out of office because there was uh, interference in the election by Brazilians or, or, or Venezuelans or whoever the fucking villain is at that time. I mean, so I, I don't, I... I'm going to watch it wither. I don't want to. I wish it wouldn't. I hope because I have a godson I love and nieces and nephews and everybody that I want to have a better world. But I just I look around and I'm like, holy fuck. I don't I just I <laughs> and also I'm I'm not worried about it anymore. That's the weird thing. Like I used to get these these terrible fucking things where I I almost paralyzed myself because I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Like, I mean, it's 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 so crazy to see rule of law flouted and, and fucking torn apart and nobody and everybody pretending it's okay. There's a story in the New York times about Trump and his tax returns. And like, what's he lost a billion dollars or he's lost more money in the history of taxes than anybody else in the world. And, uh, and he's lied. So he's lied consistently about his fucking businesses and he hasn't paid taxes for like 15 years, whatever the fuck, any of that bullshit. And everybody's just like, yeah, man, what an amazing life. He's had a, he's lost a billion dollars. I sure wish I had a billion dollars to lose. What the fuck? What is this guy? How is he? He's not even Teflon. He's just, he's what, what, what doesn't burn asbestos? I don't know. Asbestos might burn. I don't fucking know. He's, he's that pink fiberglass shit that you, that you get in your lungs and it just kills you or you get it on your skin and it makes you itchy fucking forever. That's who he is. He's just made out of fucking that pink fiberglass shit. If he gets in your lungs, he'll kill you. If he gets in your brain, he'll kill you. If he gets on your skin, it'll just make you itchy and feel terrible. That's who that fucking dude is. And yet, and yet, and yet, there are people who, who love him. They're just like, yeah, dude, he's the fucking man. And I'm like, I don't, all right, good for you. I'm drinking water. Uh, I didn't want to talk about this fucking guy. Jesus Christ. Um, 52. Soon to be 65 and getting an autonomic disorder. How amazing is your body? How amazing is it that, that you can walk? I went to, it's funny. I, I vacillate between being satisfied and, and wanting more. You know, I, I lived in my apartment for 21 years and I, I really like where I live. I like the complex. It's got a pool. I like my apartment. It's, it's small, but it's, it's, I, I, I'm neat and tidy and, you know, I got a couch now. I got a bed, <laughs> baby steps, but I'm making it work. But I, uh, I, I just, sometimes you see something that makes you, you want more. I, I went to help my buddy Pat. Uh, well, it's funny. We we're talking about before I get to this, I went to help Pat, uh, move some stuff at a, at a friend's house. And, uh, that's what I was talking about with your body where you, where you, you, um, it, it fails you or you, it falls apart, you know, as you get older. And I had to go up and down stairs at this guy's house. And, uh, the one concession I do have to make to being as big as I am is I have to take steps one at a time. Uh, you know, if I lose more weight, then I can go down steps. And then look, let's put it this way. I can take steps, um, you know, one, you know, step, 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 instead of one down, two down, three down. When I say one at a time, I got to do both feet, like right foot, left foot, right foot, left foot onto the steps. Um, I do it just for comfort because I mean, I don't want to risk the chance that I fucking blow my knee out because I'm, again, I'm a heavy dude. So who the fuck knows? So, uh, so at, 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 at this dude's house, I'm also carrying heavy weights. So I was carrying, you know, you're carrying 50 to 70 pounds worth of stuff down every trip. And, uh, and that's only because Pat, <laughs> Pat thinks I'm a maniac because he'd be like, all right, man, go ahead and uh, grab this or grab that. And, and I grab three things and he'd go, are you going to, you're really going to grab? And I'm like, yeah, dude, I know how to carry shit. I mean, I, and it makes it go faster. If you grab three things instead of one, then it, the whole thing goes a lot faster. So we had to straighten up this girl. Anyway, the, I don't want to say whose house it was, but it's a friend of ours, a mutual, you know, he's, he's closer to Pat, but I've known him for years and he's a, he's a comedian, uh, who's extremely successful, very successful guy. 
And so uh, he he has people and handlers and all that stuff. And so his house, he's just like, you know what? Hey, Pat, if you can come help me with some stuff. And he needed to clean out a closet, and then we we needed to clean his garage. And just and, and meanwhile, he was taking a lift to go get to the airport because he was going. He's going to do a stand up. You know what I mean? It's just he's had pilots. He's just a and and uh, and, and as I've said before, you know, I I I have this. I have Twitch. I have YouTube. I have all those things. But and I my my brother's on the ships. He does stand up. God, I'm I'm scattered. I'm all over the fucking place, and I apologize for that. Um, people ask me about the ships like Lenny goes on the boats and he does stand up and people say to me they're like do you you know would you ever want to go on the boats I'm like yes fuck yes I would and they're like seriously I go oh my god of course I would why wouldn't I and they're like well it's you know it's a it's a lot of work whatever I'm like yeah it's a lot of work but you're on the boat and you're doing stand up it's not it's not driving people around in a fucking car all the goddamn time and it's real money you know what I mean and you can go you can make some fucking money and then come home and I was like well then you should try to get in the boats and I'm like well I'm not gonna slag real comedians by saying that I should just go on the boat because these real comedians have been doing it for 25 fucking 30 years and they've got an act and they've got it honed down and they get in the boat and they fucking kill and they do really well so for me to just presume like I uh that I can just do it you know what I mean that thing where you're like oh yeah I'll just get back into can- comedy you know the problem, as we've talked about on the show, the disconnect is I have to I have to start at the bottom. I absolutely have to start at the bottom and try to work my way up. And uh, I I, <laughs> I got I have no interest in going to sit for three hours to do five minutes at a coffee house. I just don't. But that's the thing. That's the ladder you got to climb because otherwise I I mean I'm not going to be able to go to a headlining set on a boat. Who the fuck knows? Oh fuck! So I was going to tell you I have this audition in my body. God, I'm all over the fucking place today. So anyway, the point is. Uh, my 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 friend's house is is unbelievable. I, I I live in my apartment and I'm happy and I'm content. But then I go to my friend's and look, Pat's got a gorgeous house. I go to Pat's house and I'm jealous. He's got a pool. Uh, I went over to his place for the fucking rock solid barbecue. I'll get to that in a minute. But I mean, it was just he's he's got a gorgeous place. And and her buddy's house is just sunken living room fireplace. Huge living space, big leather couch, fucking pool. Um, upstairs, there's you know a, a, a huge guest room, and then a regular bedroom, and just and a, a shower with two shower heads. It just creature comforts that I I always I'm like ah whatever you know I I'm I'm happy where I am. But then when you see the way other people live or they have stuff, and and then because because here's where it all the floodgates open. You go you know what fuck, you know that guy he's younger than me, and. What he did was he just kept working. He kept doing stand up and then he started doing it and got noticed and then he was on TV doing it and, and really good things happened and because he made it work. And and I then go, Well, fuck, dude, you you didn't. So you can't like I, I'm not I'm not envious or jealous, but at the same time when I go to somebody's house, uh I, I've told you I've had this feeling before. Like when I was in Arizona, it's just I, I a, a kitchen island because you know our buddy has a kitchen island too just this gigantic fucking kitchen island countertop and and i know those are things to you know stuff is just stuff but but also it's a way to mark your success but also i you know i see things that i i have a weird thing about what rich people have i know this is going to sound weird like to me you know my buddy has he had a bunch of liquor uh, he had a couple of bottles of like Moet and Chandon and then he had, you know, tequila and vodka and whiskey. Like he had a, basically a wet bar, you know what I mean? And, uh, and that to me is, is such a fucking rich man's game and indulgence. Also, he had, he had two eight person tents, two four person tents and a three person tent. And I'm like, that's, that's a lot of tent. I mean, that, that's fucking honestly, that's like 27 people. Are you ever going to go camping with 27 fucking people? It's you buddy. But, uh, but you never know. He had golf clubs, you know what I mean? A full set of golf clubs. He had like, he had every, I mean, he had piles, these fucking trunks that were full of DVDs and CDs and shit like that. And I'm just look, I'm looking at all, we're cleaning out his garage. I mean, he's got a desk in the garage that is nicer than the desk in my house. And we had to just, and he's just like, yeah, I don't know. He's like, if you know anybody wants any furniture, tell him I'm, I'm getting rid of a bunch of stuff. So tell him to just come over and get it. And I'm like, I, the furniture is even too, it's too big for my apartment because it's house furniture. It's just giant. There's a giant fucking recliner, all these different things. Not that I need it anyway, but still, uh, it just looks much better in a house. It would look oversized and fucking ridiculous in my apartment. 
But uh, it, it just, I know stuff is just stuff. But sometimes when you see stuff up close, you're like, oh, fuck, I wish I had this stuff. That'd be fucking cool as hell. How great would it be to have this stuff? I'd love to have a house. That would be great. Even though in my mind, I've, I've resolved to the fact that I'm never going to buy a fucking house, honestly. Hell, I need a new car now. I mean, I need, I need a car. I need, a, I need, it's all sorts of shit I need. We all need. Everybody needs. That's the point. Because it never ends. It never fucking ends. You need this. You need spoons. You need glasses. You need laundry. You need fucking laundry detergent. Even even if it's shit at the grocery store, but then you need new clothes. You need new jeans. You, need, you, you always, it, it's just weird to need, need, need all the fucking time, man. This is spinning off all over the fucking place, huh? This is a lot of fucking... See, this is what happens when you live this kind of life. <laughs> you don't nail yourself down. But I, I, in that, in our friend's house, man, it was just... It was insane to, to have that feeling of, man, I this would be, this would be great to, to live in a... Because then you could have people over, you could cook out. I, I know I have the silliest... They all come around to having friends and family. That's all. You know, I, I don't want, I don't need a, you know, I'm not fucking Elvis. I don't need a Graceland to hide in it on my own. I mean, I got enough time digging in like a tick here in my fucking apartment. If I had a house though, perhaps I'd entertain and have more people over and do all that kind of stuff. I don't know. I don't fucking know. I don't know anything about anything anymore. I really don't. I don't. Uh, I've, I've been lucky not to yawn as much. Um, I, I thought for sure I would yawn because of course. Of course that fucking happened. Um, I told you I worked out hard because I only, I only lost one pound in, in April. So we did, we did lifting today. I did fucking triceps and then uh, rows up, upward rows, up, upward rows, not, not chest rows, but like back and shoulder. And then, uh, we did chest presses. And I did a new thing today, which I haven't done. And it was, and, I, and whenever he gives me this, because the new, look, if it's weights, I'll happily throw weights around. But if you're like, we're going to do plank, I'm just like, fuck. I mean, because plank's fucking hard, but also I look stupid doing plank. I'm just a fat guy on his elbows. It's just like, it just, I know nobody gives a fuck in the gym. Nobody's looking at me, but in my mind, everybody's like, look at a fat guy on his elbows. I mean, and they're not, I get it, but it doesn't matter. My brain is still clouded. So, uh, I wound up, I, the exercise I had, he had me do step-ups. Um, so I just onto a box, a box that was like fucking, a, a, how, long, how high was it? Two feet, probably a two foot tall box. And I had to step up with my left head, left leg for 15 and then my right leg for 15. Then on the second set, he gave me 50 pounds to hold, 25 pounds in each hand or, and, and then, you know, step up with 15. And I mean, you know, it sounds simple and easy, but Jesus Christ, did it win the fuck out of me. You know what I mean? I had to do, I did three sets of those and I'm already a giant man. So I'm fighting it off as I'm going up one step, one step by myself. But then you have me another 50 pounds and I'm, I'm essentially just doing step ups while, while holding 400 pounds and, uh, and Jesus Christ did it. It just, so that wiped me the fuck out. So I, I was tired, but the reason I was really tired was I had to go to the gym this morning. They were coming to fix my bathroom today and they said they were going to be here at nine o'clock. So, uh, I set my, I set my alarm for 10, you know, I didn't have to be in the gym until 12, but I set my alarm for 10 thinking, you know, in case they knocked, I'd be awake, but I stayed in bed and then they didn't, they never came 10, 10 30. I got up at 11 20. And, uh, and then John said he was running late. So finally I went to the gym at like 12 15 and I wrote my landlady. I'm like, Hey, I, you know, are you guys coming to do the thing today? And she's like, Oh yeah, we'll be there. I said, all right, well, I'm leaving. I have to go to the gym and I'm gone, you know, for a big chunk of the afternoon. And she goes, Oh, well, all right, well, I guess we'll wait until you come home. And I go, no, no, I'm telling you right now. I, I'd prefer if it was done by the time I got home. She goes, all right, well, we started upstairs and it's going to take a while and then we'll get done by you. But once we were there, I said, well, go ahead and let yourself in. That's fine. I don't, cause I just, because here's what I wanted. I wanted to go lift weights and come home and take a fucking shower. Because uh, right, if you don't know this, I didn't know if I told you. They're changing out my toilet and my shower head. They said that the state ordered it. <laughs> and I mean, I don't know. I don't know if the governor called them. I don't know what the fuck happened. Then I Googled it because I wasn't sure if this was a real thing. Because again, you know, I wouldn't put it past these people to fucking lie to me. And then I Googled this stuff and I found out uh, that like the order went up in 2015. 
So I don't know if they had five years to comply or what. And they're just it's just getting under the fucking wire now. But they instead they well, so they had to do it. They had to do the whole fucking building. So uh, so I said, all right, just fucking do it. So I wanted to come home and take a fucking shower. I want to go to the gym. You know how it is. Like I said, on Thanksgiving, I want to wake up and all the food's done. It smells good. I just want this fucking shit done. I don't want to, I don't want to deal with it. So I went to the gym. And, uh, I, you know, John was a little late. He didn't get there for like 20 minutes. Uh, and then 25 minutes, even, I think we went inside, we worked, we lifted for about an hour and a half. And then he and I hung out and talked for 15 minutes. Then I got in the car and I sat out there for another half hour, 35 minutes, just killing time. So I could walk into a house, take a goddamn shower. And then I drove and I got home and I walked inside and, uh, they, they were not, not only were they not done, they hadn't even been in my fucking apartment, man. Same shower head, same fucking toilet. And I'm just like, you. And at this time, it's fucking 3. 3.15, I think it was. So I'm like, son of a bitch. And it's because it said on the piece of paper they gave us that it would be from 9 o'clock to 2 o'clock. Well, it's 3 fucking 15, man. So I, I text my landlady and I'm like, hey, look, they haven't even fucking started yet. Or the manager, not the landlady. I text the manager. I go, so I go uh, all right. Well, I said, I just got home and they haven't even started with a question mark. I said, I'm jumping in the shower. So... I, I, you know, I, because I still had a shower head and it was my good one. So I'm more than happy to take one more shower. I jump in and I mean, I, I banged it out quick, you know, to get into the shower. I got into the shower, took a shower, got out through a towel on and I looked at my phone and she's like, oh, we knocked on your door while you were in the shower. So we have a schedule to keep. So we had to move on. What, what the fuck? What, what are you talking about? And so I, I texted her and I said, what do you mean you had to move on? She goes, well, we'll put you back on the list, uh, but we have to do, there's, we've started already in two other apartments, but we'll get to you today. And, uh, but we, you know, when we did come by, you were in the shower, so we couldn't do anything. And I just texted, so what, what were you guys doing the rest of the afternoon? Like it was three hours. I was gone three hours. Well, you know, a lot of people chose Wednesday, so we had to do these ones upstairs. And like, just bullshit, just fucking bullshit. But also the thing where she tried to hang it on me in the text. Oh yeah, we didn't, we knocked on your door, but you were already, you were in the shower. Fuck you, man. You had three fucking hours before I got home to fucking do this shit. God damn it. And it's that thing where I can't be a squeaky wheel. I mean, I don't want to be because I don't want to get into a fight. I don't want to lose my fucking apartment. Who the fuck knows what's going to happen? I don't know. Maybe I'll just go, yeah, but unless I, again, win the Powerball and buy a house, start working on boats. Who the fuck knows, man? Everything's a coin flip at this point. So sure enough, she, uh, she just, I, I, they, it took, they didn't get into my apartment until five o'clock. I think it was five twenty-five actually, and uh, and the, it was and the, it was one dude. He knocks on the door, and normally my building has an army of fucking Hispanic dudes who do this kind of work, but there was an Asian guy by himself, and he's like, "Oh, please, sir, so sorry to." And I mean, you know what the fuck? I'm not gonna imitate him because it's racist, but it's, he's just, you know, he spoke broken English. He was an Asian guy, so I said, "All right, man, come on in." I opened the door, and then he looked at me. As if I was going to help carry in toilets and shit. And I'm just, I just walked away. I'm like, well, you know, no offense, but if you want my help, ask for it, but don't look at me with pleading eyes. Uh, take that puppy dog bullshit somewhere else, man. I mean, you should have been done with this shit before I fucking got home. So he comes in, he goes in the fucking bathroom and he just, and, uh, you know, they, they, he just, he just did it, replaced everything, but it took an hour. So now it's like 6.15 or something, 6.20. I'm like, what the fuck? And he's like, all right, I am done, sir. And he fucking leaves. Now, they gave me a new toilet and a new shower head. I didn't shower with the new shower head, but it's, you know, it's nowhere near as good as my old one. But the toilet, here's the worst part. They took the toilet out, and my old toilet was like part of the wall. So the, the, he removed it, and the new toilet is shorter. Like, it's, it's weird. It's funky. It's it's bigger surface area to fucking sit on and use but it also is lower so the wall i i should take a picture of it and post it it's just fucking disgusting because it all the fucking paint peeled off and was torn off when he took away the toilet so now there's this like three inch line right above my toilet that just looks like a fucking slum i mean it's all chipped paint and cracked and fucked up and so I'm going to text my my landlady and I'm going to say, hey, man, you got to come fucking fix this. I mean, you can't just leave this in my apartment like this. Uh, and even worse, oh, so then I told my landlady, I, the manager, I said, hey, because uh, for some reason, look, I don't know how bathtubs work. I know you climb in them and you, and you get clean and you get the fuck out. It's a magical thing. We talked last week about a walk-in tub. I should have had one. But right now with this tub, um, 
I think there's a sealant on your tub. I don't know, because, you know, tubs are porcelain, but I think they actually seal the porcelain somehow so you can't fuck it up. Well, sure enough, man, they put this fucking, whatever, true coat. I don't fucking know, but it's now tearing away from my tub. So where my tub meets the wall, um, there's a gouge. It looks like a, just a fucking, you know, it's, a, it's about an inch a- across, and it goes, and it's about eight inches long, and it's... Water gets in it. Water is running between the sealant and the tub, whatever the fuck. I don't know. I don't know if there's mold. I have no idea how it's going to work. So I told her, I go, hey, look, I go, these guys, you know, if you can take a look at the tub, please. She goes, oh, that's not who these guys are. They're just the installers for the, the toilets. I said, great. You can come look at it. She goes, what do you mean? And I said, well, I said, you're the manager. You got to approve a repair. And this absolutely needs to be repaired. She's like, okay, I'll definitely take a look at it. Well, she didn't fucking show up. I told you that dude showed up at fucking 530. She was probably already home in her house. Who the fuck knows? So now I'm going to text her. I'm going to send her photos now. I'm just saying, hey, look, this is what this wall looks like. You got to fix this shit. And now look at this fucking tub because I can't get her to come to my place. They, they are the dudes. Again, I'm every second of 52 years old or 51 and a half or whatever the fuck I am because I just, I just want to fucking yell. I just want to grouch and grumble and just be like, how do you... How do you have this job? You know, you've heard about my fucking adventures with my manager in the past, but just this thing where they won't even, you tell her to come look at something in your house and you get <sighs> like that bullshit. And I'm like, oh, fuck. You know, I, you know, I don't want you in my apartment. I don't, if I never had to fucking talk to you ever again, I'd be thrilled. But unfortunately, there's shit that's got to be fixed, man. And you foisted this fucking water saving toilet on me, which makes no fucking sense. This thing, this is just, I, it's just. Again, it looks nice and it's got a lot of you it's got a lot of room for you to sit on and do whatever the fuck you need to do on there, but dudes, it's it's just it's like a fucking four flusher. I mean, you just got a fucking whale on it, man. I think did I talk about this last week? I don't know if I did. I know I talked about it in the stream. Jesus fucking Christ, I confuse myself now. My whole life is fucking deja vu. Did you talk about this? Did you talk about that? What the fuck, man? You know, the, the nature of the show is to just fucking fire away, and that's also the same thing in the stream. But then the problem is I don't have any detailed notes about what the fuck I talked about before. So if I'm boring you to tears, man, fuck me. I apologize. Uh, wait, you don't want to hear toilet talk? Is that what you guys are saying out there? I can hear you screaming it as one out there in fucking podcast land. Um, this toilet, dude, it's beautiful. It looks great, but it's a four flusher. You got to flush it a, a bunch of fucking times because I, because it, it, literally it is, if, if it, is, you know, you ever hear that? If it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. Well, with this fucking toilet, if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, make a frown. Because man, I no matter what you do, you just you you just got a new shit roommate. That's what you got because you can flush ten times and that shit is still floating around or fucking hanging out in there, or it comes up to visit or it says hi or it doesn't or it's still even worse it doesn't budge. I mean it's just fucking what a goddamn mess. And I mean and look, I don't I'm not eating fucking you know boxes of fucking all brand or anything like that. But I mean you wind up using the fucking restroom and and I I just it just it takes fucking forever. Jesus Christ. And now I got a, I, like I said, I got a fucking shit roommate. I don't want that. Not going to give him a name. Oh, nobody wants to name their shit and fucking go in and visit the goddamn dude. I just picture flushing four times. That's just, you know what? If your shit defeats your toilet, it should stay in there. You should, you shouldn't get the flush again. You got, unless you give it, you, it for that day. Anyway, your shit won the day. Your shit has triumphed that day. And it now lives in your house and there's nothing you can do. All you can do is just come in and visit, give it a name. You know, leave a light on so it, it, it's not fucking scared at night. And then the next day you try to flush it down again. If you're, if you're, if shit, your shit defeats your toilet in one-on-one combat, he gets to live in your house. That's the new rule. You just got to fucking leave him in there. And, I mean, just for a day though. It's not like he fucking rules the roost. You know, you gotta give shit a month. Obviously you got to take care of it. But the next day you got to flush again. And until he goes down naturally, you can't do any, no fucking cheating. You can't, uh, no plungers anymore. Yeah, yeah, unless the water's coming up. It, dude, if the water's coming up, I mean, plunge the shit out of it. I don't care. Because I mean, that's sneaky pool. That's your shit just pulling some sneaky pool. That's him. Because again, if your shit defeats your toilet and just lurks there and he's like, ha ha, then he wins. But if your shit goes halfway down the pipe and then he just fucking clogs it to, out of spite, fuck you shit. How dare you clog it out of spite? I'm furious at you right now because now the water's rising. You grab the plunger and you're fucking wailing on it. And then you just uh, fucking, you don't need your heart rate to go. Because again, I'm 52 years old. I can't get a fucking heart attack because shit to try to try to fucking flood my house. That's not good at all, baby. Uh, boy, that's a lot of talk about shit ruining your life. Uh, I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh God, I'm tired. I'm so fucking beat dudes. You know why? Cause again, lift it out hard, but I didn't even tell you the real fucking thing. Uh, I was in bed this morning 
Six fifteen AM, gotta be. Uh I have an Apple Watch. And I I look, good for Steve Jobs. You wanna bother me from beyond the grave with your inventions and shit like that? Okay, that's fine. But this motherfucker, this Amber Alert, I, dude, I don't and I haven't done any investigating. It's, been, it's not like they happen all the fucking time. You would think that they would, but it doesn't matter. 6.15 in the morning, I'm I'm laying down and I got my Apple Watch on and my, my fucking, it's right by my ear. It's right by my fucking ear because I'm on my stomach and I got my my left hand up on the pillow and it's it could not have been the worst time for it. It just makes that fucking noise. Have you had your fucking Amber Alert kick in on your phone? Holy shit. I, I I thought I was like if I if I, I was on a train to to fucking Treblinka. I mean it was just fucking this weird alarm that makes no fucking sense. And also I don't need to know who's kidnapped. That shit doesn't mean anything to me, man. I mean I it's, especially at six fifteen in the fucking morning. Like I looked. I mean I, I looked at my phone. And it was like Amber Alert. Fucking uh, two thousand fifteen Kia Soul. One girl who answers by the name of Kyla. But I mean I get. I have terrible news for you, Kyla. There is a shallow grave with your name on it because if you chose to get kidnapped at fucking 6.15 in the morning, you're not getting my fucking help. Tell the cops. Don't fucking alert. You know, this fucking thing where we're gathering up a posse to help find this chick, hey, later on, maybe. I guess so. If we're going to comb the fields and try to find her. But 6.15 in the fucking morning? You know, there's a reason he stole her at 6.15 because he knew none of us wanted to get out of bed. Good on her. Good on him. Good on her father. He, you know, I, I don't I don't need to get to dragged into somebody else's fucking domestic suit pre-dawn. You know what I mean? Fuck that. I have terrible news for you, Kyla. You're going to be fucking lying in a hole soon, and there's nothing I'm going to do about it because I've got to get one more hour of fucking sleep. Am I selfish? Yes. I don't care because I'm also old, and old Trump's selfish every day of the goddamn week. So I tell you what, Kyla, I'd love to climb out of this warm bed and make these old bones into a fucking rent a cop who could find you in your time of turmoil. But whoever the fuck kidnapped you is driving a 2015 Kia Soul. And I have a rule. I never, ever get involved in a crime where the fucking perpetrator is driving a nicer car than me, particularly if it means I have to lose a night's sleep. Old and selfish. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what? I'll wear it. You guys can get me at Mike at Mike Schmidt comedy.com. You guys can be my friends at facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy. You can follow me at twitter.com slash the 40 year old boy. Uh, what else? There's other places, right? <laughs> I'm available on Instagram and Snapchat at Mike four zero Y O B. That's Mike four zero Y O B. My throat is all fucked up now. I don't even know what the fuck happened. Dude, I'm a mess. I'm falling apart. I got. I think I got athlete's throat. <laughs> I might have a fucking my uvula is all chapped and peeling. Uh, that's what it sounds like anyway. All right. So here's the deal. That's the point. I gotta stop saying those fucking modifiers. Jesus Christ. Um. So again. You guys can get me at Mike at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. You can find me at Facebook.com slash the 40-year-old boy and be my friend there. I'm available at Instagram and Snapchat, of course. And uh, I'm at Mike40YOB on those places. Ryan Dirks does all the web stuff for this show. You can find him and tell him he's the best, please, at Facebook.com slash Ryan Dirks. Go ahead and find him and tell him he's the best. And, uh, and also, please remember this. Our lovely friend, our talented friend, David Hernandez who you may know from the uh, the Naperville Hernandezes. I guess that's who he is. Maybe Actually, you know what? You're not going to know him from the Naperville Hernandezes. I, I can't lie to you. You're going you're gonna to know him from this show, I would assume, uh, because he is, uh, look, he does all of the artwork. He does all of the amazing stuff for this goddamn show. He does all of the music for this show because he's the best. He's the king. He's the guy that you love, right? Isn't he the guy that you love? I think he is. Um now, there's, there's all sorts of different places where you can find this man. First of all, you can be his friend at facebook.com slash the 40-year-old boy. Uh, no, you can't. What the fuck am I doing? I, I'm telling you, my brain is fucking fried, folks. Um, go to facebook.com slash David Mix Hernandez and become David's friend. And on his artwork, his photos that he has on the Facebook page, he has an art by DMH album that you can check out there. It's got caricatures, guy cons, portraits, valscapes, all sorts of stuff like that. So you can see his previous work. Also, you know, he does all the work, uh, the artwork for the West Side 86 Jokers fan club page. If you want to go to that page and scroll through all the cover artwork that he's done, he's done a, a variation of the Joker every single week and it's fucking phenomenal. So please go check that out. So go to facebook.com slash David Hernandez, become his friend. 
And you can find uh, the Art by DMH album on his uh, Facebook page within his photos and see all of the work that he's done, a bunch of characters, all sorts of uh, caricatures, different things. And also go to Westside 86 Jokers, which is the, the fan club page. While you're there, join. Why not if you haven't already? But go check it out and see the cool stuff that David has done on that page as well. Uh, if you want to get him, you can get him through Facebook.com. So like I said, become his friend and write him a note there at Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. Or you can reach him at David at ArtByDMH.com. That's David at ArtByDMH.com. Like I said, go check out his website. Um, you'll see a bunch of the stuff that he'd done that was kind of like... Uh, you know, he has an advertising background and stuff like that, some developmental stuff that he did. You can also uh, check that out over there at his website, artbydmh.com. And it's worth it just to go look at the, the the depth and breadth of the work that he can do for you if you're wanting to hire him to do something, because that's the whole thing. You got to hire this man. You got to get him to do some artwork for you. Like I said, if you go to facebook.com slash David Mix Hernandez, you can see a lot of the cool stuff he's done. Um, and also, he has a page on Facebook called This Is Dumb, I'm Dumb, You're Dumb, or You're Dumb, I'm Dumb. It's, but it's, it's, it's a page on Facebook. It's a locked page. But uh, you can join. And when you join, you can see characters and content that he's created to go ahead and, and you know give you ideas for other things that you might want him to do for you. You would have to answer three questions to join the group, though. I, mean, I don't think they're very difficult. But they, again, they might be. Who knows? Uh, the whole point is be ready for three fucking questions or else you'll be tossed into the abyss by a troll, man. Uh, so go to the, this is dumb. That's dumb. I'm dumb. You're dumb Facebook group, which you can just, you know, push that in and, and search it. Or if you can probably get it through his, his Facebook page itself, cause I'm sure he shares a bunch of stuff on there as well. Uh, and, and get involved there and hire him to do some stuff, man, because that's the best part. Uh, well, that's not really the best part. The best part is when you pay him. I, you know, hiring him is nobody gives a shit about the hiring. And I'm sure the creation part isn't even that exciting for anybody. However, the exchange of money for goods and services, holy fuck, does that knock it out of the goddamn park? I got to tell you, that's just that that's just a, a green heart on with a picture of a president on it. God damn. I love that part. So uh, so hire our friend David. He, David Hernandez does all of the artwork and the music for this this channel, this show, all of these different things. Find him at Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. Go to his website, Art by dmh.com and if you want to contact him you can again you can get him to the facebook page after looking through all of his artwork and deciding what you want him to do or if you don't want to deal with facebook because you know what maybe you're not a zuckerberg person you can go ahead and reach him privately personally and quickly and swiftly at david at art by dmh.com that's david at art b b b fuck me <laughs> i was going to spell it out because i spelled the uber thing out that's david at art by holy fuck what is wrong with me David, because you know why? Because I didn't say the David at, and it's fucking my brain up because my brain is conditioned to say a certain thing. Let's do it over. Go to his Facebook page and get him on there, or you can reach him at David at artbydmh.com. That's David at artby. Dudes, kill me. Again, old, needs sleep, all fucked up. Am you know, blame, blame Kyla for this shit. This is fucking Kyla and her fucking Amber Alert. Part of me is hoping that her dad still has her. I hope they escaped. I hope they made it over whichever border they were going for, Canada or Mexico. I hope they just fucking sprinted off. Because, I'm, you know what? I think Kyla's dad loves her. I think he's a good man. I think he's gone ahead and taken her, and he's going ahead to make sure that she has a better life in some other country. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe he's like me. He just sees everything going to hell, and he's like, fuck that, Kyla. Hop in the soul. <laughs> we're getting the fuck out of here. Uh, hire David Hernandez to do your artwork. Go to facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. Become his friend. Go to the this is dumb, that's dumb, you're dumb, I dumb uh, uh, Facebook page. Answer three questions and become a member of that and see all of his fucking cool ass characters he's created. Or you can get him via email. David at artbydmh.com. That's D-A-V-I-D at A-R-T-B-Y-D-M-H dot com. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, what condition my Murano was in I walked into Dave's place, the garage my car was in Dave the Aussie, he asked me, where should I begin? I saw a broken glass laying all around I saw my engine hanging upside down I just dropped in to see what condition my Murano was in yeah yeah oh yeah what condition my Murano was in this brought put me in a deep dark hole of course I fell deeper in 
she gets out, stinking of gin. Got no insurance, that's in daddy's deal. Now my ride ain't got no wheels. I just dropped in to see what condition my Murano was in. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, what condition my Murano was in. Why am I still talking to Kangaroo Jack? Head first into chaos by an Uber U. Another fine vehicle turned to goo. I just dropped in to see what condition my 200 was in. I said I just dropped in to see what condition my 200 was in. What condition my Murano was in. You know, a lot of people were asking me if I was going to do a uh, an Avengers spoilers show. And uh, I didn't, and I'm not. Uh, I'll talk about it. I'd like to talk about it at some point. But I want to make sure everybody's seen it. And uh, what I should have done was I should have done a YouTube clip with my opinions and all that kind of stuff. But I thought, again, I did that thing where I talked myself out of it because, hi, I'm lazy and I don't think I'm good enough a lot of the time. Da, 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 da. Even though people tell me I am and I'm not looking for reassurance from you now, I'm just saying I'm dumb and I know it. Well, I'm not really dumb. Don't talk mean to yourself. Again, be kind with your words. One of the four agreements. Uh, be impeccable with your words, I should say. All right. Hi, I'm, ta- I'm done talking. But the point is people ask me about Avengers and I'm like, uh, you know, I want to talk about it. I've seen it twice. And, uh, and actually, you know, I didn't get to bring this up last week because of last week's, the nature of last week's show, but I did, uh, you know, I went, I went to, uh, to the movies with our good friend, Wayne, Wayne was in town and his girlfriend, Aaron, they came to town and we went to check out the fucking uh, Avengers together. Then we ate at a taco truck standing around a truck that they rented. It was fantastic. Good that Wayne and Aaron came to town. I'm, I'm enjoying, see, this is fucking cool, man. When people come to town and they want to fucking hang out, that actually makes me happy. You know, I did that thing last week where I'm like, Hey, look, let's, uh, you know, that uh, call me, Mike, what is it? Schmitty call me at gmail.com still open. Uh, I wound up getting like, I think it was just like five or six people this week. Now I have not called them yet, but I will, but like five or six people reached out and sent emails. And if, if you're on the list and you want to be someone who does that sort of thing, I'll be happy to call you. I would like to do that because again, I'm uh, we're fomenting a community here. We're trying to be friends. We're trying to be uh, together and pals and all that other kind of stuff. And I, I and we're that's the whole deal. I had to tell you, I tasted that over the weekend. I went to um, I went to the Rock Solid Barbecue. Our buddy Pat Francis, the host of Rock Solid, had a barbecue at his house. It was an opportune time because there was a podcast that done was Friday or Saturday, I think, and people were going to be in town. So Pat's like, well, fuck, I'll just schedule a barbecue while people are in town. And, uh, and, and so I wound up going to the rock solid barbecue and just seeing a community of people coming together and having fun. Cause you know, Pat's also just an open gregarious, fun, cool guy. I mean, fuck, he's letting these people in his house and he bought all the fucking burgers and he bought all this stuff, dude. It was just, it was really neat and fun to be a part of it, you know? And I, I did it. Our friend, Jeremy, who, uh, you may know from previous mentions on this show, Jeremy, who actually was kind enough to set me up. You know, he, he wound up getting the computer that I stream on basically. And, and he's just really generous to this show. And so he was in town for podcast at Don. And, uh, and so I asked him, I go, Hey, you want to go to this barbecue? He's like, well, is that okay with Pat? I said, of course it is. You know, and I, I had checked with Pat already. It was fine. So I told Jeremy, he could, uh, you know, meet me at my place on Sunday and then we go up to fucking Pat's. And so he shows up at my apartment and, uh, you know, it was good to see him because I, I had hung out with him in Seattle. I talked about that on the show before, but it was it was just uh, just camaraderie, just seeing people, just having a good time and being together is just so. I miss it. You know, it's it, it's the one thing about my place. Like I have, like I would love to have a cookout at my house and just have like a couple of friends over. You know, when we go play poker at chips, I went to play poker at chips last week, and holy fuck, was it the best? I uh, it was me, Siegel, Gil Martin, my buddy Pat. Uh, our buddy Rosie, Chip, um, and and a guy that I, I can't say enough about how funny he is. I always enjoy him when I see him, and I don't get to see him nearly enough, but he's now, it's been two months in a row, so I think he's going to be at the at the poker game every month if he's in town. 
And I just fucking Bill Dwyer. I mean, I fucking love Bill. He's a good friend of mine, and I I've, I just don't see him enough. So, seeing him at at the poker game was totally fun, and uh, and he was just a loud fucking dick, which he is. And and but I love it. It makes me laugh, and and we just had a great time. And so, I don't play poker nearly enough with my friends. We do it once a month. We should do it twice a month. We should do it once a fucking week. I mean, I'm I'm just I I'm craving interaction because you know i do i hide i hide in my apartment but seeing people is the most fun fucking thing in the world i i really dig it so uh going to movies and and all that shit i mean and look i don't mind being alone i mean i'm I'm going to see spider-man alone which i found out you know because the tickets went on sale and i checked in and everybody's going with other people and i'm like all right i'll go by myself that's fine um the first time i saw avengers i went twice i went and saw it alone by myself the first time and and uh and then a couple days later i went with wayne and aaron um I can do either or, but as I'm getting older and I, I see, you know, my, my, the, you put yourself through the ringer thinking what you should have been or thinking where you should have been. Or uh, like I said, when I went and saw my buddy's house, I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, if you would have worked, you could have this. I mean, and also you worked at shows you were writing. If you would have hustled and done more, you know, you, but you, you can only live the life you're living now and realize, you know what? Fuck, this is. Yes, it could be different, but it's not. So make it different. You know, do that. Do do everything you can to make it different going forward. And and I'm not doing those things, but I'm trying somewhat, you know what I mean? Like I said, losing weight and changing cooking. and But then I still will wind up getting, you know, I'll live stream and then I sit for seven hours or whatever and watch hockey and surf the net and then go to bed. It's like, dude, there's other shit to do. There's other Go out, go do stuff, man. Get inspired. Go, go live life. Go anywhere. Do fucking anything. Although it was cold today. <laughs> I don't, I can't deal with it. It's so cold. What an idiot. Um, having Jeremy in town was fun. It was, I, I would tell you, we, so we go to the, I, he comes to my house. Then we go to the Rock Solid Barbecue and I park by, by Pat's house. And Jeremy has, uh, and Jeremy's a big dude. He's like me. You know what I mean? So he, he was climbing out of the car. And uh, he zigged when he should have zagged. <laughs> and he's climbing out by the curb. And he, uh, I, how do I put this? He's he's getting out and he's, when you're a, a, a big person and you're getting in and out of cars or you're doing stuff, uh, stuff happens. You have to be very careful. Like I, oftentimes if I go somewhere and I see a chair that looks frail or delicate, I, I know how to sit on it without crushing it into fucking kindling. I mean, I, cause I look, I'm, I'm a fat dude. I've broken a fucking chair in a restaurant before. That's no fun. And cause in addition to what happens, you beat yourself up over it and you're just like, man, what the fuck? Why did this happen? And you just, you put yourself in a shame spiral and it's not good. So I say this because Jeremy was getting out of my car. And like I said, he zigged when he should have zagged and he put his weight on the trim of my car, like at the bottom, I guess would call you call it a running board, whatever the fuck. I don't know. But running boards are much bigger, but, but the trim at the bottom of your vehicle and he literally put his weight on it and he pushed off and I, I wasn't even looking and I just heard this, the loudest fucking crack, just this huge fucking noise, man. And I'm, and it's that thing where I, I knew what happened. All right. I, because again, I'm a big dude. And I also knew he was going to be fucking mortified, and he was. Oh my god, he's just like, I'm so sorry. I'm, uh, and he's just, I'll pay for it, whatever it is, however much it costs. And, uh, and I said, Oh my god, dude, don't worry about it. He goes, No, I want to pay. And I go, Oh, you're going to pay. <laughs> There's no doubt you're going to fucking pay for this, because it's like I can't even open the back door because the trim came off, but it's also up in front of the back door. So if you open the back door, it goes, it scrapes on there. The trim is just, it's just pulled away from the frame of the vehicle. Uh, and it was just this, at least it didn't break. It's just torn off. He just basically tore all my trim off. And, uh, and you know, I, I busted his balls and I'm like, Hey man, you know, you bought me a computer, but that doesn't mean you can fuck up my car. Was that the whole plan? You sent me a computer and then you can come down here to fucking take it out of my vehicle. You fuck. What are you doing? Uh, cause I was trying to lighten the mood because I could see that he was, you know, I've done this. It's where you go away. It's where you just obsess about it and you're, and you're going to be worried, you know? And I told him, I go, I go, dude, stuff happens. And he's like, yeah, I know, but I mean, I didn't mean to do it. No, you know, and I go, I go, Jeremy, forget it. Let's go have a picnic. Let's go have fun. So we went into the backyard and again, it was a, it was a deal where it was, uh, you know, Pat and his wife were there, Pilar and, and 
Uh, our buddy Suze. Oh my God, I love Suzanne. She's the fucking, I don't see her nearly enough, you know, and Siegel was there and Ted lied and Christy Mann, who's one of the hosts of Rock Solid and uh, Christine Blackburn showed up. I love Christine. She's got a show called Story Smash. I've done Story Worthy, her podcast. And she's like, it was so funny. Whenever, when I don't see people and then I see them, they're like, oh my God, I got to get you back on the show. You got to do this. You got to do that. So, so I'm, I'm going to be doing an upcoming Story Worthy with Christine. And also she does a live show called Story Smash. And she's like, you would be perfect for it. You have to be at it. Oh my God, you're so great. Uh, and then she's like, wait, you could be a judge. I mean, just, it was, it's nice to be wanted. And she just started talking really quick. And she's like, we'll get you here to do this. We'll get you here to do this. And I'm like, I'm in for all of it. I just, I want to do everything you do. That's fine. Please include me. Um, but that's what happens when you actually go out of your house. You run into people and things like that happen. Uh, Daryl Asher was there who, uh, if you're a fan of Never Not Funny, you've heard his name a million times. He's just a, a longtime fan. And uh, I, I he thinks... Not anymore, I don't think. But there was a while there where he didn't think I liked him because I made fun of him. I made fun of him on Never Not Funny all the time. And I didn't want Daryl to think, you know, I, I, I felt bad about it because it's like, no, it's kind of like a term of affection if we're busting your balls, you know what I mean? But there are people who are just like, well, I don't need that much affection from you, motherfucker. I don't know you. And I get it, you know, but so I saw him and I, I, I was genuinely happy to see him, took a selfie with him and I talked to him and I was very careful not to tease him. Uh, he can take it. It's just, I don't, I never want to give anybody the wrong impression. You know, I just, I, I like Daryl. I like everybody. I don't, I don't want to dislike anybody. So it was really a great time. And uh, like I said, Jeremy, you know, he, he, you know, then I said, Hey, you want some food? Cause they were made hamburgers and hot dogs. And he's like, I'm a, I'm a vegetarian. I'm like, Oh, oh man, why did I even bring you here? I feel so terrible. And he's like, no, oh my God, I had a huge breakfast. Don't worry about it. And so then we left and he's like, I said, you want to have some dinner? He's like, Oh yeah, I'm actually pretty hungry. I said, what kind of food do you want? He picked Thai food. So I gave him the choice of whatever Thai food. You know, there's a few Thai food places that are really great. I've talked about them on the show. And uh, I had taken Tanya and Mike to Jitlada. So I was like, well, let's go to fucking Night Market Song. You know, that's really good. So we went to West Hollywood to Night Market Song. And, uh, you know, like I said, Jeremy, big guy. And he, he has a, he has a, you know, a thing with his legs. So he has some trouble walking. So I was like, I'll just drop you off in front, dude. I'm not going to valet. I'll go find a meter, but I'll drop you off and then I'll come back. You can go in and get our tables. And he said, great. So I pull up to the curb and he opens the door and uh, same deal. Like he, you know, now he can't put his weight on the fucking trim and he knows that. So he's got to step out. He puts his foot down. Then he tries to get to the curb. And uh, again, I know this agony of feeling like you're being betrayed by your body because you're too big and, and, or you're not strong enough to, or you step the wrong way. And uh, he steps out of my car and he's got to put all of his weight to lean and, and he just, I'm in the driver's seat, the car's running. I mean, he's just, I'm just dropping him off at the curb and he goes down like, like one of the fucking trade center towers. I mean, he just fucking, and in levels too, like hits his knees and then hits his chest and then hits his head. Like he just falls down on the fucking sidewalk. And I, you know, I saw it happen. It's just that thing where I'm in the car. So I'm in my brain. I'm like, should you have gotten out and fucking helped him out of the fucking car? You dick. And it, but then I'm like, no, it's just, it was an accident. It happens. And, and again, I was a big guy. And I also recognize as a big guy, when you fall, it's scary as shit because you, you, a, you have no control. Your body is just like, fuck it. Gravity's fucking you up. You just hope you don't hurt anything. And so he goes down and I'm like, holy fuck, Jeremy, are you okay? And he goes, I'm good. Just go. And uh, I go, well, wait, well, hold on. Let me fucking help you. And he goes, I'm good. I'm good. Just go. And, uh, and again, I know exactly what that's about. That's a guy who's crazy embarrassed about what just happened. And he doesn't want you to pay any special attention to him. He can deal with it. Even though it's foolish pride. You should just go, you know what? I need to help up, buddy. I need, I need a hand. And I would have put the car in park and, and helped him up. But instead, he's just like, just go, just go. Uh, and I, and, but I will tell you this, my experiences of having that happen to me, I knew exactly what was going on. So I just went, all right, buddy, he closed the door and, uh, and I, you know, I pulled away and I had my turn signal because I had to merge into traffic on sunset Boulevard. And as I'm sitting there, I'm looking in the rearview mirror and he's still on the ground. And in my brain, I'm like, did he really get hurt? Like, is he fucking, but then he kind of shambled up to his hands and knees and I still wasn't able to merge into traffic. It was a busy street. And he just started to crawl toward the restaurant. And I, I, 
you know, I, I just wanted to hug him. Like I wanted to go pick him up and go, dude, it's good. We're cool. It's cool. Everything's okay. Everything's going to be okay. Even though that's not the kind of guy he is. He didn't want any sympathy. He didn't want anything like that. But in your heart, you're just like, oh, you see anybody who needs help, anybody who's, who's been laid low by a circumstance, you want to, your instinct is to reach out and help. But I also knew that that is exactly what he did not want. So he crawls over toward the restaurant and then a couple was walking and I saw them stop to talk to him. And then I saw another person kind of stop and then I pulled into traffic and I went and parked at the meter. By the time I walked back to the restaurant, he was sitting there on a chair and he's like, hey, I put us on the list. It's 20 minutes for a table. I said, great. So then I was looking on the menu for stuff he could eat because he's vegetarian. I'm like, do you eat fish? He's like, no. I'm like, God damn it. But there was like vegan pad thai and a bunch of like yam dishes, shit like that. Because it's a, it's a really fancy, good Thai place. So of course, they're going to have different selections. And I looked at Jeremy and I said, uh, you okay? He goes, I don't know, man. I scraped my leg up pretty good. I can feel it. Because he's wearing jeans, so he didn't know. I said, all right. I said, well, I want you to know that I was going to help you. Like I wanted to get out of the car and, and give you a hand. I said, but, um, you know, I've been in that position and I recognize what was going on and you were you were embarrassed you fell right and he's just like yep and i said all right i go well and i get that and that's why i left you to your own devices because in your mind you're like i'll i'll i i'll take care of it it's my body it's my my situation i can fix it i've thought that myself again when i was a big dude and i've broken chairs in restaurants or whatever the fuck or didn't fit on a, a ride at disneyland it's that embarrassing perp walk of shame you've got to do away from there I and mean, everybody knows why because you're a giant you can't fucking do anything about it but uh but i wanted jeremy to know that i you know i wanted to help him but i i understood exactly what he was going through and i knew what he needed me to do to help was to leave him alone and he's like you're right and i said all right i go but don't you know man if you need help i'm happy to help because well some people came by and i go, okay i go but i'm just i'm letting you know that i know why that happened but i'm letting you know that i absolutely wanted to help but i respected your wishes and he's like that's cool i get it so uh we went in to eat we got some papaya salad got a little pad thai i got a i got a cum fook sui which is i don't know what the fuck i some some beef tendon stew that i had gotten with a mod in december i couldn't wait so delicious so amazing uh and then i took him on an impromptu tour of, of hollywood impromptu tour of hollywood i took him there was the body shop and the fucking i saw him at all the strip clubs um you know, I, I, I showed him the oldest building in Hollywood because he's he's listening to the show. He just started year three. So we're still in Lily's second apartment. He has no idea what the oldest building in Hollywood is. I go, this means nothing to you now, but look here. And I go, this is the oldest building in Hollywood. He goes, okay. And I go, this will mean something in like year four. And he goes, what? And I go, well, Lily moved here. So we wanted, this is where we recorded the shows. He's like, no way. I said, yeah. So uh, he's got that to look forward to. He saw that. And I took him around Hollywood. I go, this is over here. You know, I, I just, I said, this is the intersection where I beat up the car. <laughs> and he hasn't heard that show yet where I fucking attacked a car. Um, you know, so I said, this is the intersection right here, buddy. And, and uh, it was fun. So I got to show him, you know, they get that little dime store, 40 year old boy, to boy tour. And, and I just enjoyed having somebody to hang out with. I enjoyed hanging out with Jeremy afterwards when we were going to dinner and I enjoyed bringing him to the fucking picnic and, and seeing everybody. It was just, it was just right. You know, it's, and I, I can't wait to get to Canada and see everybody. That's going to be totally fun. Um, oh, I'll tell you this story. This is funny. Eh, I shouldn't tell you this. Well, I'll fucking tell you. Uh, I was on Twitter and I followed, there was some, uh, there was a woman I follow and she's, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of intimidated by her. She's real smart. She's a good writer. Uh, funny. And she wrote the other day that like something, something, she made some comment that she'd never been to a Dodgers game. She was wearing a Dodgers shirt. She's like, I've never been to a Dodgers game. So I wrote her, a, I, I, I don't even know what possessed me to do it. Well, fuck no. I absolutely know what possessed me to do it. I, mean, I was my, In my mind, I'm like, you know, she's she's an attractive woman. And I was like, all right, well, why not? So, And it wasn't even like a, that. It was more of a, obviously, it was just like a friend thing. Because I mean, I don't fucking know. But it was still asking her out. And I wrote her a note on Twitter. And I just went, uh, May 31st, Dodgers Phillies. It's a fireworks game, and uh, you know it's a, it's a great way to be introduced to the park. I'll be rooting for the Phillies, but I'm not going to paint my face and you know whatever. And uh, and she was very nice, and she wrote back and she said she's going to be out of town. And uh, and then I wrote her, I was like, well, you should get to the park. And da-da. and then she's like, okay. And then in my head, I'm like, am I mansplaining stuff like about the ballpark? It's that weird thing now again. Like I said, I don't have any, I got no fucking clue 
<laughs> on on how to do this again. I, any game I had is completely stored in mothballs, but but it was I had to take a shot because I find her tremendously interesting and and uh, she's very smart and 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 funny. So took a shot, but she's going to be out of town. So what the hell? Um, but I, in my brain, I was just like, as the kids say, shoot your shot. Uh, whenever, whenever you have, <laughs> you miss 100% of the shots you don't take is I think a Wayne Gretzky thing. So there you go. Um, God damn, my voice is fried. All right. So, Hey, did you know that we have sponsors for this show? Well, we fucking do man. Oh man. Uh, the most amazing sponsor and probably the only sponsor. So I'll just tell you about them right now. The paranoid strain podcast available right now in the iTunes store. Uh, go ahead and do me a favor, download that show, subscribe to that show, leave a note in the iTunes store saying how much you love that show and mention us. Cause again, it lets our friend fearful Jesuit know that we exist and that you found us through him. Uh, listen to the show and download it. Subscribe. Uh, this week's episode, this week, this fucking month's episode is the, is about assassinations. I've talked about it. I've teased it. I don't want to give too much away. If you've heard me talk about it over the past few weeks, uh, just know that you will be hearing all sorts of stuff about the origin of Sunni and Shia. And uh, just very, again, a very information dense, well done fucking show that's entertaining and informational uh, in for um, inform inform Jesus Christ, informational, informative. Jesus, fuck. Uh, it's really good. Maybe he'll do a fucking episode about why I can't talk. He'll go ahead and squirrel out of my fucking skull for a while. Uh, if you want to contact our good friend, fearful Jesuit, use this email address. The paranoid strain at gmail.com. The paranoid strain at gmail.com exists. Write him a note, tell him how much you love the show, tell him you found him through us, and uh, and just compliment him on his great works because he is doing really solid work and it is a very difficult show to do. It takes a lot of discipline, a lot of talent, and he has all of those things in spades. So please tell our friend Fearful Jesuit how much you love the Paranoid Strain uh, podcast by writing him, theparanoidstrain at gmail.com or leaving a note in the iTunes store. And, uh, and make sure you mention the 40-Year-Old Boy podcast because then he will know that we are getting through to our listeners. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Who wants to drive for Cameo? Who wants to drive for Lyft? Is it you? It might be. Although uh, things are, a ri- uh, I'll go into it more next week because there was a strike this week where we didn't drive. Like I didn't drive today, but I mean, I haven't been driving anyway, so it was a fucking hollow gesture. But um, with the IPO coming up, I want to talk more about Uber and Lyft probably next week. But uh, but in the meantime, if you want to drive for Lyft, use my code and it's all caps, Mike720057. That's Mike M I K E seven, two, double O five, seven. That's if you want to be a driver for Lyft and you want to use my code. If you want to be a first time rider for Lyft, you can use my code. I get a spiff off of that. I appreciate you thinking of me. Uber, the same thing applies. This is all lowercase D J Z W one Y T T U E. That's D J Z W one Y T T U E. Please use that. And, uh, and I'll be happy and so will you. It'll be fantastic. <laughs> use it as a, as a, as a driver, or a first time rider and I get credit for it. It makes me very happy. We have the YouTube channel, which you can go ahead and check out and become a fucking subscriber to that. That's over there on the old uh, YouTube. <laughs> but YouTube.com slash the 40-year-old boy. Um, and then, of course, we've got a Patreon, which you can become a patron of. It helps with the Twitch stream. Oh, I have a Twitch stream. Did you know that? Pretty much every day, although I didn't fucking uh, on uh, today because of the fucking toilet slave who came into my house. That's probably the wrong phrase. Um but if you go to twitch.com slash the 40 year old boy and follow the channel, you will always know when I am on. Uh, I'm always looking around at three or four in the afternoon and I do it probably five, six times a week. But going forward now, I've got a bunch of different emojis and I'm, uh, things are taking shape at the channel. So I will start having a streaming schedule posted at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. So please go to twitch.com slash the 40 year old boy and follow the channel. It would make me very happy. Become a Patreon patron and you're supporting the Twitch channel. You're supporting uh, this podcast. You're supporting any live stuff I may do in the future, like the stuff I'm doing in Toronto. Uh, that's just a trip. I don't know if I'm doing a show yet, but whatever. I'll be recording a live podcast there, certainly. So, uh, so please, please, please. And also, uh, there's, there's talk afoot that I might be in the Midwest. Not really. I mean, it, it was a plan that got floated, and I thought about it. I was like, hmm, because I would be, uh, there was a thing called Pierogi Fest in Indiana that I got invited to last year, and I didn't get to go. And now part of me is like, uh, maybe I'll go this year. But then... Who knows? It was a thing where I, I kind of like people were all talking about it in the discord. I have a discord. If you don't know what that is, it's a place where everybody, it's like a chat room just for me. <laughs> and people were talking about it. And I was like, Hey, I just looked at flights and everybody's like, Oh really? And then like, that was it. It just died. And I was like, well, maybe this isn't a plan. Like maybe nobody really wants to do this, which was fine with me. I'm like, all right, that's cool. Um, but again, that's how, 
I guess, desperate I am for human contact and friends, I guess you'd call it. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> but I looked. It was a possibility, but I, I'm sure it's not. But either, either way, I'll be in Toronto uh, in in August for 10 days. So that'll be totally fun. So um, support via Patreon. That would be great. Go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com. Go to the merchandise page and click on our Amazon link, which is up and working, albeit crooked and a little off center. It's still working, man. Go ahead and use the Amazon link. We get money, they get money, you get stuff. It works out perfectly for you and us, all of us involved. Go ahead and love it. Uh, and you're getting a bunch of stuff. Whatever the fuck, you're shopping. Why not get in there and buy some things? Someone bought a bunch of flip-flops, I think, just to taunt me uh, last week. But that's fine with me. I don't give a fuck. Buy whatever you want. Buy a fucking house on Amazon with my link. That's totally cool. We get money, they get money, you get stuff. Go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com. Go to the merchandise page, which is the Joe Business page, and click on Amazon and, uh, and use that. And, and scroll through. Is that a scroll through? I don't know if it's a scroll through. I, you're just going to go through and click shit, and then I'm going to get fucking credit for it, and everybody's going to love it. It's going to be fantastic. Thank you. Uh, and and now, dudes, I'm fucking... I got I to gotta sleep. I got to do... Actually, you know what? Yeah, because I got to go pick up somebody at the airport in the morning. I gotta, by the time you hear this, I'll be... Uh, I'm on my way to fucking... Oh, Christ. I'll be on my way to fucking Long Beach. Not even the airport, now that I think about it. I got to... You know, it's it's fun. I love that people think of me and I'm making money on these side hustles and all these rides, but Jesus Christ, I just I just want to fucking I, I you know what? Can we invent something where I just come by you? I don't I just sleep by your house for like a week. Would you would you want me? What if I was this homeless orphan comedian guy and I just fucking crashed at your house for just a couple of days or a month? <laughs> How about that? Just a fucking month? Don't you want me there? Don't you want me to show up and just fucking crash out right there in your fucking house? I'll try to turn off my amber alert so it doesn't wake anybody up in your goddamn place. I'll wake up I'll make you breakfast. You know what? Fuck that. If I come to your house, I'll learn my keep. I'll make your breakfast. I'll rake some fucking leaves or I'll sit out in your gazebo and fucking laugh and smile. I'll entertain you the whole fucking time I'm there. Somebody adopt me, man. Just get me out of this fucking rut. Just give me a hand up. You know what? I'm Jeremy. I'm, I'm, I'm laying face down on the cold asphalt of Sunset Boulevard, man. Everybody put your hands out and grab me. Let's pull me up in the air. Let's throw me on your shoulders and carry me aloft. I know everybody else has got their jobs and they would love to have somebody reach out and help them, but I'm I'm the fucking talent. I'm the, I deserve this shit, man. I look, Not that you all don't deserve it, but I really deserve it. Don't you think, when you really think about it, aren't you thinking to yourself that Mike is the kind of guy who really needs all of you to step up and give him everything he's ever wanted? I, I, Ready? You don't come to a throne if you're not gonna suck a dick. Egg, egg, egg.